Okay, so a couple things. Um, I'm trying to work ahead because my school is going to be on break next week. So uh, I'm going to try to get a couple videos pushed out today. But thank you for uh, subscribing. I hope all these videos are helping. And um, just, uh, you know, keep tuning in. As I'm going to take a few days off next week, and then I'll come back, and I'll try to get right back to it with one or two videos in the afternoons again so I can stay ahead of wherever everybody is. I'm so excited that there are a lot of subscribers um, and I hope I'm helping uh, because I know this program can be really tough. So with lesson 18, I don't have any notes for this because when we do estimating, there are just so many variations on what you can do. Even the answer key in the teacher's manual says, answers may vary. So the kids will always ask, you know, is my answer okay? Is my answer okay? And I'm like, if you're within a reasonable amount, 50 or 100, sometimes even 1,000, and when you get into the bigger numbers, 2,000 or 10,000 is fine. Uh, it just kind of depends. It really just depends. So I'll try to talk you through some of these. Again, the most important thing to do is round the divisor first. Okay, number one thing, round the divisor first. And so the first one's done for you, and we're just rounding. And not everybody is going to be thinking the same on these. So when you get to uh, the all rounded digits and you've counted the place, and make sure that they are all uh, the same number, that they have to be four digits here, four digits here. And then you can slash out those offsetting zeros, because if we were to divide each side by 10, we would take off that. Or if you did the switch it to divide by 10, then divide by 2, that's what we're doing. It's just like from lesson 17. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch that video. Um, and so then you can do that, slash the zeros, because you're dividing by 10, and then divide by 2. That's where you get the 300. So again, this is your controlling number round the divisor first. Now I need multiples of three. A multiple of three that is really close to 26 would be 27, but it's not just 27. I still need this digit and this digit to become zeros. That's where you get those four digits, so be super careful. Divide both sides by 10, then divide this by three. So that's gonna give you 90. So really, lesson 18 is just much the same as what we did in uh, 17, the numbers are a little bit bigger, so you just have to be careful about your thinking. Round the divisor first, and then look for a multiple of this digit, which would be really close to 9, so 9,000. Divide both sides by 10, and then do your division, and get 300. These go really fast once you get going. Uh, 53, round the divisor first. Let's round to 50. I want something close to 14. Let's use 15. Two more zeros, one for each of these places. Oop, that's where they're coming from. And then divide both sides by 10. Divide this 15 by 5, you get 3, and this zero comes down. Round the divisor first. 64 changes to 60. I need a multiple of 6 that's close to 25. Let's use 24. Remember, you can go up or down. It doesn't matter. It's just whatever uh, is closest to this digit. We want a compatible number or a fact family a number for this one. So divide both sides by 10, 24 divided by six is four, the zero comes down. Round the divisor first. Now I need a multiple of seven that's close to 22. What would it be? You are correct, 2100. Divide both sides by 10, divide 21 by seven and get three. Don't forget that zero there, right there for 30. Now, this is where they start to potentially get kind of crafty when they put in the fives and the middle digits. Can you go up? Can you go down? It doesn't really matter, but you want to look for something that is going to be close to your dividend. So if I was to um, go up to 80, then this could be 48. What if you went down and you end up with 70, then you need a multiple of 7 and then you have 49. So you have options and um, I wouldn't stop you from going either way. Let's just uh, let's just round it to 80 just for funsies. And, um, and we'll use the 4800. Divide both sides by 10 and get 60. 
And this one's pretty easy, round 81 to 80. I need a multiple of eight that's close to 85. Um, some students will say, let's just use 8,000, and some will say, let's go up. And, uh, oops, wait, one, two, three, four, yeah. Sorry, my writing is squished. So what if we used 8,800, would that be okay? And yes, as long as you divide both sides by 10, then you would have either 100 for this one, or the 88 divided by eight would be 11, and then there's that extra one. So these are all fine. Answers may vary as they like to say. This rounds up to nine, and then I need a multiple of nine that's close to uh, 85 and 81. So let's say you go to 8,100. That would work fine. What if you went up to 9,000? Yeah, you, you can do that. It's all fine. And so you would end up with either uh, 100 or 90 because it just kind of depends on which one you choose. Okay, round it. Round the divisor first. 68 goes to 79. Need a multiple of 7. And uh, sometimes it's not even within the same like like decile range. So you might have to go up like 42 hundred is actually pretty close to that. What if you went down to 35? Could you do that? Of course. Again, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You make the call, whichever one you like. I like 4,200, so we'll leave it at that. 81 rounded to 80. Now I need a multiple of 8 that's close to 51. Notice that these are, these are all kind of now in between, and so it's giving you lots of options. You're getting ready for dividing with these great numbers and things aren't going to be uh, cut and dried every single time. So let's look for something close to 51 and let's go down to 4,800 and then divide both sides by 10 and again we get 60. Very popular answer here. 93 rounds to 90. I need a multiple of 9 that's close to 49. Again that's right in between so I can go to 4,500. I could go to 5,400. It's really up to you. Divide by 10, and that will give you either 60 or 50, depending on what you choose. Sorry, I should have moved it up earlier. Now you can see it, and we'll do the last row. Um, round the divisor first, and I need a multiple of 9. And this is pretty close to 54, so I'm going to divide both sides by 10, and again we got that very popular 60. Round the divisor first, and I need a multiple of 9 that's close to 69, and this is again, it's right in between. I'm going to go up to 72, it seems like it might be a little bit closer, and then divide both sides by 10 and get 80. And right here smack dab in the middle is our 15, so think before you round, and think before you snack before you act. Uh, tribute to Mulan. And then, uh, so what about 15? What if I just leave it there? Because two 15s are what? 30. So can I do that? Yes, of course you can. It's estimating. You can do whatever you want as long as it makes sense. So when you divide this, you cannot simplify by dividing both sides by 10 because there is no zero here. So do the division with your fact family problem 30 divided by 15 is 2 and pay attention to those last two zeros okay now on the second page of 18 we have a bunch of word problems but they are all about estimating so again we do have some options and uh, let's read through them together a swimming pool requires 672 feet squared of floor space. The length of the swimming pool is 32 feet. Estimate the width. Remember, if you have length times the width, you get area in the middle. Area equals length times the width. So if we are given the, uh, the area, then we would have to divide because if it's 672 feet squared, equals the length, 32 feet, times the width, we need to estimate this number. So essentially what you have to do is do the opposite of this. That's like a whole lesson unto itself. 
of why you can flip that around. Okay, so we're gonna do the opposite, and this is our starting point for estimating. Round the divisor first. Now I need a multiple of three that is close to 67. Now we have some options here. So I would prefer to go really close and use 660. Um, that's the way I would do it because I see that six and six are both divisible evenly by, um, by three. And so I want to get 22 feet. Now, sometimes I have time and I'll go, I'll do the problems all by myself without the teacher's manual. And then somebody will say, well, I did it this way. And I'll go look it up. And then the book has it a different way. And I'm like, ah, my answer's better. But anyway, you can certainly do what the book does and round the divisor first, and then round it all the way down to 600. And that would be a very simple answer as well. So either one approximately would work. I think mine's better because it's actually closer to the amount. But uh, again, it's estimating, so there's really no right or wrong answer. Janice bought 28 apps for her phone a real-world problem that altogether used 1,348 megabytes of space. If each app used the same amount of space, which never happens, about how many megabytes of memory did each app use? Show how you estimated. So um, let's take our total amount of megabytes, megabytes and we'll divide that by the 28 apps. Okay, now again, what do you do first? You guys say it. Round the divisor first, yes. Now I'm gonna use a multiple of three that is very close to 13. Now the closest I can get here that is reasonable would be about 1,200. That's not a very good M. So 1,200 megabytes divided by 30. Divide both sides by 10, and then have 12 divided by three, which is four, and then this zero comes down. And so, um, the, go back to the question about how many megabytes of memory did each app use? Each app used approximately 40 megabytes. And then label your answer. Always with word problems, label your work. It's totally worth it to spend the time with, with the words, making it clear. Now let's continue this app question. If half the apps were free and the other half were $1.99 each, don't you love that? I never would say that when I'm out shopping. I'm like, it's $2 plus tax. Uh, about how much did she spend? So if half the apps, how many apps? 28. So half of 28 or 28 divided by 2, which is basically where we're going with that. Or what do you add up to get that? So that's going to be 14. Okay, so half of the apps are free, and the other half, the other 14, were uh, $1.99 each. So 14 times $2, because we're still estimating, uh, is what we're going to spend. And so sometimes with money, that's not 200 it's $2.00. Sometimes with money, it's really hard. You're like, what do I do with this decimal? And you know, you can still just use that whole number and say 14 times two is $28, and that's fine. Um, so she spent about, it's very convenient here for this problem, about $28. Okay, so that is uh, 3B. Now, number four, a quart of paint covers about 85 square feet. About how many quarts would you need to cover a fence with an area of 3,817 square feet? So we're going to take this total, 3,817, and we're going to divide it by the 85. So we round the divisor first and thinking about what is going to be close to a multiple of this. Now, what if you go down to 80? What if you go up to 90? What would be the multiple that you would use here? So it's going to change it. So if you used 80, okay, you want to have something that is like 40. 
but what if you use 90? Okay, then I need a multiple that would be a multiple of nine. And so then I could use 3,600. So it really depends on kind of what you see and how you feel about those multiples. And even if you know them, maybe this will just pop into your head instead. Uh, this, both of them or all of them are divide by 10 first and then 40, watch out, 40 divided by eight is five and then there's an extra zero. And then 36 divided by nine is four with the extra zero. So depending on how you round, you'll get either 40 or 50. And so you would say about 40 to 50 quarts. I, I would just have one, of course, if I was a fifth grader. I'm just showing you both ways because there are multiple ways. Last one, Peggy has saved $9,215. Uh, if she is paid $45 an hour, about how many hours did she work? So we can take that total and divide it by the amount per hour to figure out approximately how many hours. And again, when it's right in the middle, you have some options, but, uh, but this one could be pretty simple. I mean, you can just round this to 50 and then go to, well, you can go to, sorry, don't wanna go up that high. Go to 9,000. Um, and then you can use 90. This is not an exact um, multiple, so you could also use 10,000 and use 50 as well, and then that would be a little bit easier. With this one, you'd have to have um, a carryover, and so some students will want to do that because they want to get closer, but it's really up to you. So um, if you divide this, you would get 180, thinking that through, because you divide nine by five and you get the one right there, but then you have four left over, which would lump in with that. That's where I got the 80. So I'm just kind of doing that in my head because it's supposed to be easy. If that's not easy, then I would use this one because essentially the whole point of estimating is to make the math easy for yourself. If it's not easy, then you haven't really done yourself a good service. So about how many hour, hours did she work? About 200 hours. So um, again, if you like these videos, uh, click subscribe, and then I will be loading videos probably uh, one a day as soon as we get back from break. And um, I always, as always, I hope they are helpful for you. All right, take care.